Right, flitch beams, big roofs, uh, double timbers and canopies. We're going to talk about them all. This particular build is seven metres long. It is four metres deep and it's also got a three metre canopy, which we will be propping on these concrete pads. But I want to talk you through the full, the full roof build because I know a lot of people want to know about it. Right, so basically, if you look at the front of the building, yeah? I'll stand inside, Debbie. You stay there, mate. There is a triple window, so there'll be a pane of glass there, a pane of glass there, and a pane of glass there. There will be non-opening windows, and here we have got some sliding patio doors, which will all travel that way. So what we've been left with is identical nibs, which are just shy of um, 700, they're about 680. So we've designed it in such a way that the nibs are identical. So what you've got to bear in mind now, we've got all that weight of that roof bearing down on them three nibs. Yeah, there's not a lot of timber there to carry the weight of that roof. And of course, we've got our threaded bolt under each nib as well. So we've got two on the corner section. So there'll be one there and there'll be one there on that corner. We've obviously got some running through there. There's one directly under the center of that nib and there's two on this corner as well. So if David comes inside, I'll show you the roof structure. This, this build, yeah, it's permitted development. It's practically as big as you can go without planning. It's 28 square meters, yeah. The, the, the square meterage is the internal floor space and they do actually measure that from skirting board to skirting board. So 28 square meters is under permitted development. So we've kept under the height as well, which means we have used five by twos in the roof. Now over a four meter span, they are not sufficiently big enough. Right, so let's talk about the roof. This five by two is a single one because it is braced off the wall, yeah? It's not actually spanning that distance, it's actually sat on the wall. So imagine if it was, it's part of the wall, so there's no actual weight on there. This next one, we've got a flitch beam. I'm gonna drop a video in now of us making flitch beams. Uh, Basically, a flitch beam is a piece of steel plate sandwiched between two pieces of timber and bolted as well. Right, permit development 2.5, you're limited to a five by two. Um, roof timber. This is four metre span on this roof, so it's too big for a 5 by 2 Now the build park states that you can use two, two 5 by 2s bolted together, which this one is here. Look, can you see that? Yeah, it's been bolted together. Yeah, nice and tightly. It's nailed and bolted. And what we will do, um, if this was my, my own in my garden, I wouldn't bother with flip beams, but because we are building them commercially and I need to warrant them, then we will have Double timber, flitch beam, double timber, flitch beam, double timber, flitch beam. The reason why we've got flitch beams above these doors as well is I am trying to keep the weight down. The front of the building has only got three nibs on, which are approximately 650 each. So I didn't want to put a full steam across a, a steel across there because of course I've got flitch beams on them as well. Right. I, I've got um, a steel plate. It is 100 by 10 mil thick. Yeah. Um, just, just pop it on there, Davey, onto the trestles. I'll just show you something about the steel, look. Right, put it on there. Yeah. That way, it's absolutely useless, yeah? It flexes like mad. But if you stand it that way, it doesn't flex down. So that is the idea behind it. What you're gonna do is sandwich it between them two steels. Pull it five mil off end, please, give it. It's around there. Yeah, we're gonna sandwich it between the steels. Well, I've pre-drilled it already with the mag drill. Um, it's literally what it says, it's a magnetic drill. It, you switch it on, a magnet fixes to the steel. Jenna, I got my mags on, so you've got to stay there, mate. You, you switch it on, it sticks it to the steel, and then you drill it with a ro brooch bit. A ten We've been using 10 mil, so what I'm going to do now, the steel's held in place. I'm now going to go down, and I'll explain in a minute why I haven't got two bits of timber on top of each other. So I'm going to go down, I'm going to drill all them holes that I've already drilled there. That's unfortunate, let's fall around the trestle. Yeah, you're gonna have to stay next to me because I've got no mics. One minute. Right, so I've pre-drilled them now. Right, the reason why I've not put two timbers under there is simply because a lot of the timbers have got twists in them. So what I will do now is pull it, come on. I will get that timber on top of there. And what I'm then gonna do is I am gonna drill from the underside because of course I've got a hole now. Can you see there, Jen? Yeah, where the steel is, yeah. Where's that square, David? On there, on the insulation, passing that spot, please. Right, so what I'm going to do is, Callum's going to go to the end and he's going to move the timbers left and right for me. Towards the house, please, Callum, just on oh, no. the. Actually, the first one I can do myself, Carter. <laughs> yeah, one minute. David, you're going to follow behind me? Yeah. Right, so I'm going to drill through there. See, that comes straight through now. What will happen now is, David will drive a nut through. Just drive it through, David. 
Yeah, I'm gonna do the second one. Not through, David. And I'm gonna work my way down the beam like that to the house, please. Tell them why you're staggering. You what? You tell them why you're staggering as well. Yeah, I will do in a minute. They're every 400 or approximately anyway, you know, you can get tape measure out, I suppose, if you want to. Turn the fence, please. So the reason why he's pulling that is because one timber is twisted against the other. And what we are now doing by him doing that and me bolting them is we're getting them dead in line with each other. Which will then make sure that our timbers are straight. Right, I have not bought the correct size bolts. Let him just, Debbie, just get that one in there. Jen can't count. Yeah, you dropped them on the floor, her. actually, bugger. Where are they then? On the floor there, where Davey's just picked up. <laughs> right, one minute. Tip, tip, fence. Tip, fence. There. Okay. Right, so that now is faulted. Right, the reason why they're staggered is because we've put them all... Uh, down the bottom, it will want to open like that, and if we put them all in the middle, it's better if they're staggered. So up, down, up, down, up, down. Right, what will happen now is that has become increasingly heavy. Right, so they're now going to put a washer and a nut on, and again, simply because I have not bought the right tackle with me. I haven't got a deep impact wrench. So what we're going to do, we're going to wind that down like that. We're then going to put that off. Like that. I'm then going to wind it again. And snap the DeWalt bit. That's unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah. Right, I literally bought that yesterday, so the bit for that has just snapped in that. Um, so that'll be going back. Um, right, okay, back to the spanner then. So, <laughs> see, everything's live and, you know, we don't edit much at all. Let me see if that'll come out there. No, that balls my jaw up as well. Don't want to get that out for the water. Yeah. Right, but so basically what we're going to do, we're going to nip them down really, really tight, yeah? Yeah, and then we're going to cut that off again. The reason why we're cutting that off is two reasons. I've got the wrong size bolts. And secondly, we want to get the insulation up as well. So what I can't show you at the minute now is, have we got a socket there on there? Look, it's a big socket. Can, can you stick it on there for us? Yeah, try, let me try that one. See, it's compressed, look, yeah? That is what you want. Obviously, works a damn sight better when you've got an impact driver. But then again, DeWalt are not living up to their tough built reputation. What does it actually say on there? Does it say deep impact socket set? Was it say? Walt, right, we'll from Tool Station. That is 100% going back because that's broken on the first one. Right, so I'm going to wind them down like that, look. Yeah, can you see it's compressed, look, yeah? And then David will go back and cut them off. Right, so that is your flitch beam. Right, so that's your flitch beam. It's basically the piece of steel sandwiched between the two timbers and bolted tight. Now, we've got a weight issue here. We can't make every single one a flitch beam um, because we've got so much weight on the roof. So what we've done, we've gone flitch, double timber bolted together, flitch, double timber bolted together, flitch, and so on throughout the build. And also to keep the weight down, um, we've gone for flitch above the openings as well. If David can just keep up there. Can you see the steel, David, all do you think? Yeah. Yeah, so we've gone flitch there as well, which reduces the weight. Now, a lot of people ask me, can you put a flitch beam above your doors rather than the steel? But if you think about the flitch beam, if you watch the video I've just done with the flitches, you're seeing us drilling it um, with a mag drill, which not everybody's got a mag drill, so you might go out and buy 10, 20 drill bits to get yourself for all these drill bits. So you're probably better off with the hollow steel beam, in my opinion, unless you've got a mag drill and you can drill the flitch beams sufficiently. Now in the build pack, um, we don't show flitch beams simply because I'm trying to make it cheap for you, yeah? I'm trying to make it user friendly as well and not everybody's got mag drills and got the effort of drilling. If this was mine, it would be more than sufficient to have double timbers throughout. Now the flitch beams themselves, the steel cost over, I think it was £860 it cost me for nine lengths. Yeah, there were six points of them, but obviously I don't need that length. Um, 
But like, it's a lot of money, yeah? And a lot, there's 75 lengths of timber in this roof, but I know full well when this tim roof is built and if it snows and there's a big snow load on it, it is not going nowhere. But like I said, if you're at home, double timbers will be more than sufficient over a four meter span. Or if you want to double proof it and go flitch beam, you can do that as well. So we're back to single flitch, single flitch, single flitch, right? The back wall, We'll talk about the canopy in a minute. The back wall is sandwiched. It's practically like, um, I've forgotten the name of them now, where you get the insulation in between the two OSB sheets. A SIPS panel. Um, but obviously we've got our timber frame under there. So we've got OSB on the outside. We've got OSB on the inside. And it's sandwiched together. It's absolutely solid. So it take the weight of that full roof bearing down on that wall. We've done exactly the same with the front as well. Um, um, like we said with these nibs, so we've got a double timber, double timber on each side of the nib and another timber there and it's all 5 by 2 and you can see we've bolted it together there as well. Can you see that David, yeah? Just to keep it together. So the outside has got OSB on and of course the inside will have OSB on as well. Um, and that then adds more additional strength. So the OSB there is sandwich. And what we'll do, we'll go down now and we'll fix that straight down the beam lost one across the garden then. Let's put that on rapid. Right, so that's what's happened there. You can also see, because we flitched beam this and we bolted it, we've had to pack it out with some roofing OSB there. Because if you can see up there, Dave, you can see there's like a bolt. You can't see, can you? You can on this one. Can you see there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we sandwiched that out so that when we plaster bob that, it all runs through nice and straight. So that's your flitch beams, right? So you've got single, brace off that wall, which is fine over that span because it actually brace off the wall at every single point. Then we've got uh, flitch, double, flitch, double, and so on. Right, let's talk about the canopy. The canopy itself, we haven't gone with flitch because um, I'm trying to keep the weight down, for one. Um, this will not be plaster body, so there's no threat of it cracking. So we've just gone with double timbers bolted together. You can see I put a diagonal brace on there as well, which is 45 against, see it's 45 against the side of the building over there, which stops that from twisting like that. Because when we're up on it, you can feel it moving because of course, it's just sat on these acro props, which have taken the full weight of that roof. I'm going to talk about how we've cantilevered the weight as well. Down there, we've dug down a 600 pit and we filled it with concrete. That there will get our leg bolted to it. Now, whether we go with a steel leg, which I haven't decided yet, or a timber leg, I haven't decided yet, but we'll have to have some kind of adjustment on it so that we can jack it up. We'll get a laser on it, make sure it's dead level, wind the nuts off, and then we'll infill with concrete. But that'll be a video for another, another day. So let's talk about this roof then, yeah? That's your building there. I've got seven meters by four meters. So I've gone single, flitch, double, and so on. Right, at this end here, I have got, what have I got there? I've got a double timber and a divvy. I've got a double timber there. And on this side of the wall, I've also got a double timber bolted together. And that wall then, the head of that wall, is fixed to them double timbers because we're going to have bifolds there and I don't want any drop on that. So that head of that wall is fixed to there. Right, so that's, that's my double timbers and my flitch and my, my double. I know the drones, flitch, double, flitch, and so on. So what I've done with my canopy, I've got um, a length of... 5x2 at 4.8 and I've extended it to the 3 meters I need and I've joined it on one of the timbers and then I've extended these and joined it there and then what I've done then I put one over the top there so I've got a double timber on the front we'll show you that in a minute and a double timber on the back there and then these themselves are bolted together as well and I've got exactly the same scenario on the back of it as well and they're bolted together if David comes here he'll be able to see the joint in it um, where are we? there we are you see the joint there David? So that's the first timber which is fixed to the roof rafters and then they've got a second timber which overspans it as well and across there you might be able to see the joint and if David just pans up the back you can see the bolts as well. Yeah, so that's that's the structure of the roof. It's absolutely massive. It's the rubber itself, the rubber we had to buy. Uh, so they do the rubber in different sizes. They do a three, a three meters, a 4.5 and a 6.1. We had to buy the 6.1 so we could get the depth and it was 11 meters long as well. Incredibly heavy bit of rubber and really hard to get on the roof as well. But it's on now, it's all glued down, we're good with that. We can see the work that's gone in this structure, but you can guarantee that it will remain like this for the rest of its life now. So that is your flitch beams, your 
big roof span, your double timbers bolted together, your stud wall bolted together as well. We've got OSB both sides to structurally support that roof weight. There is no risk of that building crumpling or collapsing. Um, you can see Jen's put a window in over here. What we will do, there is actually no support on them two there. I'm not worried that they're going to drop because the roof's all fixed together. So what we will do, we will only form the top of that window and any compression there will be taken up by the form and that window will stop operate correctly. So that's it. That is your biggest build you can build on the permitted development without any, plan, any planning permission whatsoever. Thanks, David.